Hey everyone! Today, I have a Creality 3D printer to reveal, the Sermon D1. It's a bit different from most other Creality printers so far, but the most important difference is it has a direct drive extruder instead of the usual Bowden. A lot of people ask for this, there is one other direct drive printer in the Creality lineup, and the results are adequate, but not as good as I'd like. Creality has always specialized in Bowden, so I'm curious to see if they've gotten the direct drive right this time. Let's unbox it and have a look! So remember, in the front, there is this little bracket supposed to go inside. I'm confused because... <laughs> so uh, the front, there aren't supposed to be any little brackets like this with the screw in because the door, the front door just go in with their latches. This video is made possible by the generous support of JLC PCB, China's largest PCB manufacturer. With JLC, you can have your PCB manufactured in under 24 hours, all while you track the process in real time. Prototype boards start at just $2 in any color. Check the description box for more info. One of the best ways to support me is to support the companies that fund this channel. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community where you can take a class and learn how to do pretty much anything. While YouTube is good for entertainment, the constant ads and stalling and teasers on so many channels these days make it a difficult place to learn specific skills. Skillshare is only $10 a month, has classes on 
thousands of different subjects and is constantly adding new ones. As you all know, I'm a big FOSS or free open source software fan. Last month, I showed you one of the tutorials Skillshare has for FreeCAD, a powerful FOSSCAD package. This month, let's take a look at Inkscape. If you need to do any illustration or laser engraving, Inkscape is a program for you. So today, with a little help from my friends at Skillshare, I'm going to brush up on my drawing skills. Inkscape is FOSS, free open source software that you run locally on your computer. Once you learn it, no one can take it away from you. Like FreeCAD, I've used it a little in the past, but it's important to maintain these skills, so I'm just going to take a little refresher with Skillshare. So, um, I start creating um, a square, then I... Okay, easy peasy. That skill is locked in there when I need it, and no one can take it away from me. There are so many useful skills like this you can learn on Skillshare with no ads, no fluff, just the information you need. If you'd like to learn a free open source software application, or well, pretty much anything else, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Okay, now let's level the back. This is Kirimoto. I've been using it exclusively for all my slicing. It's fast, it's simple, and the print quality is great. I'll leave the link in the description box. Okay, this is an interesting one. I wanted to wait until I saw how it printed before commenting too much. First off, by creative standards, assembly is a huge hassle, takes a ton of time. I wanted to use the hand tools that come with it for the sake of authenticity. That was stupid. You should use an electric screwdriver. My hands are still sore. All that time and hustle gets you a very strong, rigid frame for not a lot of money. I have to say, I really like how it came out. It's stiff, it keeps straps out, it looks nice, just use an electric screwdriver. Then we move on to the mechanics, which are a little weird. XY movement is done with a Replicator 2 style gantry. This is a well-proven, 9-year-old design that's still used by countless 3D printer companies. Most not notably, Flashforge. It uses rods instead of Creality's usual Wii slot, but it's very reliable, easy to repair, and makes for high quality prints. The C axis is where things get weird. A notable weakness of most replicator derivatives is their use of a cantilever bed that's supported on only one side by rods and an Acme screw. For the Samoon D1, some of 
pop a few crazy pills and decide it rots on the XY, we slot on the Z, which is pretty weird, but it seems to work. Not only did it print the Maker Mills Torture Kill right out of the box, it did it about 30 to 40% faster than a typical CR10 style printer does for the same quality. Because you don't have to move the whole bed back and forth, that's a tremendous amount of time savings and in my opinion justifies this printer even existing. I don't have time today, but next time I'm going to do a whole in-depth flexible filament test to see how it handles it. That would be a second reason to purchase the Sermoon. The fact that it comes with a direct drive extruder is the first. But if you do want to go ahead and buy one of these, please remember while I'm honest, I am sponsored by Creality, so you should go watch some other reviewers and see what they have to say about the Sermon D1 before buying anything. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.